Good evening. Welcome to the 69th Multicultural Alliance Annual Awards event. I am Paul Jung, and I am excited to be your MC. My relationship with the Multicultural Alliance is longstanding. The organization's mission has aligned with my own life experiences. Several years ago, I learned about this organization after a family member attended the annual awards dinner. I knew I wanted to be involved and soon thereafter became a board member. I had been looking for this organization my entire life and just didn't know it until I found it. The incredible impact of this organization ripples deep in my family, especially after my son attended Camp Community two years ago. After the week of camp ended, I met him at the bus drop-off. He got into the car and looked me straight in the eyes and said, Dad, it changed my life. Because of camp, we now have a deeper understanding of each other and an enriched appreciation of the diverse communities in North Texas. And it is a given that my 16-year-old daughter will also attend camp. Along the way, I have participated in multiple table talks, which we'll share more information about shortly. While the first few table talks were around a table, sharing a meal, and having fabulous dialogue, more recently, I have participated in virtual table talks. And while I did miss the in-person connection, I must say that the virtual table talks have been equally enlightening and meaningful. For many reasons, MCA was hoping this dinner would be in person. The experience of our previous dinners shows what is possible in our world when people of all backgrounds come together to celebrate. While this is not possible to replicate virtually, we do hope you will stay with us for the entire program and reach out to us through the chat. In a bit, Bill Thornton, who recently retired from the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce, and Deborah Ferguson with NBC Channel 5 will be recognized. And the chief executive of the Dallas Mavericks, Cynthia Marshall, will offer words of congratulation. Let me first welcome Dr. Asra Khan, the presiding chair of the Multicultural Alliance. Asra? Thank you, Paul. I also have a strong connection with the Multicultural Alliance, and my relationship with diversity, culture, and interfaith runs profoundly deep. Like countless other South Asian Muslim immigrants growing up in the United States, I struggled with my identity. How I wish MCA existed back then. Both my children attended camp community, and I will tell you, they returned from that week as confident, mature, resilient young adults, grounded in their identity, eager and ready to carry on the torch of creating inclusive communities. I personally grow and benefit from being involved with the Multicultural Alliance, whether in the monthly Daughters of Abraham group, through co-facilitating interfaith dialogue series, participating in table talks, or as a board member. I have extraordinary opportunities to bear witness to others' cultural experiences and to hold up mirrors to my own. I'm reminded that everyone has an important story, and I have met friends who stand with me during celebrations as well as in challenging times. I'm so honored and grateful to serve in the position of presiding chair. On behalf of the board of directors of the Multicultural Alliance, we welcome our long-standing supporters and those who are joining us for the first time. We are thrilled you're here, and we thank you for supporting the Multicultural Alliance. We are a small nonprofit organization with a small staff, a medium-sized board, and a modest budget. Each year, we s offer several community programs to fulfill our mission of promoting inclusion, diversity, and understanding. Our programming is in part made possible by the dedication of our 26 board members. These are the people who serve this organization and are devoted to our mission. It's a given that the primary reasons a person serves on a nonprofit board are to make the community a better place and because you care about the mission. And I would also add that I serve with 25 very civic and committed community members who bring knowledge, energy, and expertise to our organization. We all have heart for this mission, and our lives are personally enriched because we serve 
with each other. I especially want to thank our table sponsors. Your funding allows us to continue our mission of building inclusive communities. We know nothing would be possible without your support. We also know that there are many worthy causes in our community. We thank you for making the Multicultural Alliance a recipient of your generosity. During our time of celebration, I would like to take a moment to pause and remember honorees and a dinner chair who have passed away since our last dinner. 1979 honoree, Dr. John M. Richardson. 1993 honoree, Corky Friedman and the 2012 dinner chair, Marvin Gerard. Thank you. Continuing our moments of gratitude, this is absolutely the perfect time to acknowledge our volunteers along with our professional staff, those who make our programming possible. I am so proud of the leadership of this organization. Our programming staff, Dr. Carol Creech and Aisha Gangali, our Vice President of Programming, Adina Citron Walker, and our President, Dr. Cheryl Kimberling. The Multicultural Alliance would not be able to develop and sustain programming without incredible volunteers, creative programming staff, and the stellar leadership of Adina and Cheryl. And speaking of our phenomenal leader, Cheryl is up next to share highlights from this past year. Thank you, Asra. It's been almost six months since the CDC announced what was thought to be the first confirmed coronavirus case in the United States. Our annual awards dinner was scheduled for March the 24th. In early March, a postponement was decided, and then another, and then another. We waited, wondering when we would be able to gather again. Then it became apparent for the health and well-being of all involved, we had to cancel camp community, the interfaith dialogues, and all the table talks. As the entire world was undergoing some kind of home confinement and a number of people living in isolation, we asked what could we do. It was decided to transition to the virtual dialogues, granted not quite the same as meeting in person, but as many were making adjustments to their daily lives, we too decided to make adjustments. We created virtual spaces so that we could connect with program participants for table talks and the interfaith dialogues and a circle sing with former camp community delegates and leadership. As you heard both Paul and Osra mention Table Talk, the newest of our programs, Table Talk provides a small group of people the opportunity to share their life experiences and deeply listen to one another. While originally planned as a one-time event, people have participated in multiple table talks. Each experience is different and based on the story shared. We have held over 15 virtual table talks on general topics that address life in general, faith, and spirituality. And most recently, we've offered table talks on the topic of race. It is always a highlight at the annual awards dinner to hear from a camp delegate. When the first night of Camp Community 2020 would have taken place, we held holding spaces, a virtual gathering for camp alumni and leadership to check in regarding George Floyd's death. The event concluded with a circle sing. We facilitated three six-week interfaith dialogue series and our first virtual interfaith dialogue series began this month. This series brings together people and connects communities of faith and spiritual practice. People gather because of their differences, learn from one another, and gain a greater appreciation of their own faith tradition. We also hosted our second interfaith retreat for those who previously had participated in the interfaith dialogue session. Those who attended the retreat included people of Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Baha'i, and Buddhist faiths. We celebrated our 10th year in partnership with Daughters of Abraham, a group of Jewish, Christian, and Muslim women who meet monthly to dialogue and build relationships. A People's Art Collaborative Workshop was held in partnership with Artes de la Rosa and the Amphibian Theater. This dynamic workshop encourages awareness, reflection, and conversation regarding critical issues. As part of the workshop, participants create an artistic representation of the topic. 
On the screen, you will see a list of some of the workshops and presentations that we've offered this past year. We are grateful to our community partners who invite us to be a part of their mission as we all build inclusive communities, working together to diminish prejudice and discrimination. This has been a year like no other in our lifetime. While this virus has divided and isolated us, the racial unrest and public injustices have stirred us. We invite you to join us in conversation and dialogue to be among the voices for positive change. Thank you, Cheryl. Obviously, we want you to be involved with the Multicultural Alliance. Join an interfaith dialogue, recruit for camp community, participate in a table talk on faith, life, or race. Donate to support our programming, volunteer. We ask you to visit our website and complete the Get Involved form. Every year, we honor those in our community who exemplify our mission, and we do so tonight. While you won't see the actual plaques this evening, we look forward to the next in-person dinner to present these awards to Bill and Deborah. Our Lifetime Achievement Award honoree, Bill Thornton, bears tremendous loyalty to the community. He values the commerce interests of citizens and businesses and has immeasurable networks and long-lasting relationships. He has attained stature, influence, and has made significant contributions during his 30 years with the Fort Worth Chamber of Commerce. For some, the days have long passed when people would stay at one job for their entire career. If you ask Bill to explain why he stayed in the same job for 30 years, he'd tell you that he was happy at the Fort Worth Chamber and there was no reason to leave. Bill Thornton, we are delighted you are our recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. Paul, thank you for your kind introduction. I want to also thank Cheryl and the board of the Multicultural Alliance for this recognition today. I was fortunate to have served on this board several years ago, and this honor is very deeply appreciated. I'm very proud of this organization's mission, and again, thank you for this thoughtful recognition. Congratulations, Bill. We are all looking forward to your next act. The recipient of the Multicultural Alliance Annual Award is a person dedicated to building inclusive communities. This year, our honoree is Deborah Ferguson. She is another person with career longevity. Deborah has a 29-year history with NBC Channel 5 of being a trusted source for local news and events. One of the most visible faces on network TV, she is also comfortable working behind the scenes. Modestly, she estimates she has served as the MC for over 1,000 philanthropic and nonprofit events. Deborah loves welcoming people, cheering them on, and turning the spotlight towards someone else. In meeting people and featuring their passions, she learns about the good work that occurs in our community. On several occasions, Deborah interviewed students returning home from Camp Community. Her down-to-earth approach places each person at ease, and her goal is to make the conversation unprompted and natural. Deborah, tonight we spotlight you. It is my honor to welcome Deborah Ferguson, the Multicultural Alliance Annual Award recipient. Paul, thank you so much for the introduction. It seems like I was an intern at NBC5 just a few years ago, and now here I am approaching a 30th anniversary in 2021. Wow. Bill, that is a lifetime, isn't it? And something to be proud of. Congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award. I sure hope that you're enjoying your retirement, and I just got to say thank you for your dedication and your passion to making Fort Worth a great place to live and work. Thank you to Cheryl Kimberling. You finally did it. You got us all together for this event. COVID-19 cannot stop a woman committed to her mission and committed to an organization that promotes inclusion, diversity, and understanding while working toward eliminating bias, bigotry, and oppression in our community. To you, to Adina, to your board members, your partners, thank you for the tireless work 
to make true the statement on this Visit Fort Worth t-shirt that I proudly wear that says, everyone's welcome in Fort Worth, Texas. Y'all means all. It's like the anthropologist Margaret Mead said years ago, never doubt that a small group of people can change the world. And indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. You are doing that. Thank you too for this honor of the 2020 Multi Multicultural Alliance Award. When a Cheryl and Nader Ruddick, the Vice President of Community Affairs at NBC5 approached me about this award, my first thought was me, then it was, what do I have to do? Speech, 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 run, run, run. I'm usually the one introducing the honoree who gives the speech rather than the one who accepts and then gives a little talk. So I must tell y'all that this is a new role for me. So it's probably good that we're meeting like this virtually rather than face to face, because then I can tell you I would really be nervous. I can also tell you I am indeed humbled to be recognized by the Multicultural Alliance, not because of anything I've done, but because of everything it does, you do, to bring us together and to help us embrace our differences and see the value, the strength that comes in inclusiveness. How do I know it works? Because I've seen the results and I've heard from those whose hearts were changed. I'll give you three examples. I first learned about the MCA a decade ago when I did a story at Martin High School in Arlington. Some students there had started the Multicultural Alliance Club to encourage cultural diversity and acceptance. That day that we were there getting our video and doing the interviews, students brought food that connected to their cultures and then used the meal as a way to start conversations that turned into lessons in diversity and inclusion. At NBC5, one of our things we like to say is Texas connects us, but food connects us too. And in the room that day, I saw a feast that filled my heart. Students with different experiences were sharing and they were laughing and they were learning, they were united. The co-founders there at the club at Martin had gotten a taste for inclusion at the MCA summer camp called Camp Community. One of them, Amon Session Brown, went on to get a degree in Spanish and political science. She is now a high school teacher in the Cedar Hill ISD, shaping the hearts and minds of the next generation. She told me the other day, and I quote here, when I reflect on my experience with Camp Community, I am still overcome with emotion from that life-changing week in the summer. Six years later, I got to tell the story of Camp Community from the eyes of three teenagers who'd been there. A young woman from Paradise High School in Wise County told me, I quote again, I went to camp and I didn't realize how sheltered I was and how inexperienced I was with different people until I got in that room. And there were more ethnicities and religions than I've ever met in my entire life. She also went on to say, it made me happy. It made me want to experience more of that and more of these people I was missing out on. I still remember that and can see her in the room as I did that interview and it, it just brings me to tears. It was such a profound statement. I can tell you that this young woman is now a college student and she is still experiencing the joy and diversity and is empowered to put action to her words. How do I know? Her social media reposts show things like, quote, here's an example of how white privilege sounds. You keep saying that it's horrible that an innocent black man was killed, but destroying property has to stop. Try saying it's horrible that property is being destroyed, but killing innocent black men has to stop. You're prioritizing the wrong part. Another of her reposts, I see no color is not the goal. I see your color and I honor you. I value your input. I will be educated about your lived experiences. I will work against the racism that harms you. You are beautiful. Tell me how to do better. That's the goal. And isn't that beautiful? These are from the young woman we post on her social media page, a young woman who gone to Camp Community, one of your alums. Even with that first story a decade ago, I can tell you I was hooked on the work of the Multicultural Alliance. That second story deepened my interest. And in March of 2020, I took the plunge. What did I do? I had my own personal experience with the Multicultural Alliance, away from the cameras of NBC5 and right here in the dining room of my home. I hosted a table talk with women I knew and women I didn't. Cheryl carefully guided the six of us through conversations where we told stories, our stories. We laughed, we cried, we bonded that night in a way that only comes with candor and vulnerability. 
Adrian, Caroline, Jennifer, Maricar, Tracy, and I answered questions. We asked questions. We took risks in sharing of ourselves and our experiences with race, with culture, with ethnicity, with our childhoods. And at the end of it, we did not want the evening to end. Little did we know the pandemic would bring an end to group gatherings for a while. That night of March 6th was the last time I've invited anyone to my home for dinner. I didn't realize that till the other day during a company presentation about our efforts at NBC Universal to create and sustain an environment where differences are celebrated, embraced, and respected. The facilitator of this session was talking about how we transform as individuals, and he asked us this question, who were the last five folks you invited for dinner? I was so happy and so proud to remember that it was the ladies who came to my home for table talk. Right about now, you might be thinking, okay, she's had these great experiences with a multicultural alliance. She's told her stories. She's had the table talk, but at the end of it, the bottom of it, what is her why? Why is she so interested and feels so connected? I'll get into a little bit of that right now. Race, diversity, that feeling of belonging have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. I've long struggled with who am I? Where do I fit in? What do I call myself? My mother is from Nicaragua in Central America. She came here as a teenager. She became an American citizen and married a Ferguson from Texas. That English surname, the brown skin, my dark hair, my dark eyes, all together, they threw people for a loop. And it threw me into a spin way back in middle school. When I was in middle school, we had the race count every day in homeroom. We had to raise our hands if we were white, black, or Mexican-American. I, I, I didn't know what to do. I, I wasn't any of them. So here's what I did. I would sit there at my desk and I would turn over my arm so that this lightest part of my arm showed. And I would raise my hand as white. I still get teary eyed thinking about that. My mom said, oh, just tell me you're a zebra. And we'd laugh about it. But the damage was done. Where did I fit in? Where did I belong? And here it is, yeah, so, so many years later and telling that story, it just, you know, brings me to, to, to tears as I think about it. I know anything about why. I was just a kid who wanted to belong. And I think to some degree that feeling is still there. Even now I will have people ask me, where are you from? Where are you, where, where, where are you from? And sometimes I hear a hidden message. Are you Hispanic? Are you Latin? What country did you come from? Well, I can't appreciate the curiosity. I'm a reporter and asking questions is my job. I sometimes feel like that I'm being judged. And I sometimes wonder if it's maybe, you know, those scars of where do I fit in? I, I still don't quite know. Yet in the same breath, I can also say that we have to have these kinds of conversations. We have to ask questions. We have to seek information, no matter how uncomfortable it is. We have to learn from each other. We all want to be seen, we want to be understood, we want to be included. My husband gave me the most wonderful gift a few years ago. He surprised me with a trip to my mother's home country of Nicaragua. We did not go to her village, yet where we were, I remember that I would look at the people and I would look right in their eyes. I, I think I was, was looking for me and I'd wonder, could we be related? My mother was the only one in her family to come to America, so I still have relatives there in Nicaragua. And while I didn't find relatives, I found something perhaps more important to me. I found who I am. Soy Nika. It's the name of a shop that makes leather goods, um, like this purse. And you made me see the little brand there, Soy Nika. Those two words speak volumes and gave me identity. Yes, I am an American born in Texas, but Soy Nika. I am Nicaraguan as well. I am unique. And that Nicaraguan heritage gives me the brown skin I have, the dark eyes, the dark hair, the ability to roll those R's when needed. And it's because two people from different countries, different walks of life, loved, married, and had my sisters and me, that I am here. My guess is that others of you share a similar story. And someday we can be together, and I would love to hear your story, and I'd love to learn. That's what the Multicultural Alliance does. It enables people to share and to listen to one another's stories. And as that post I talked about earlier says, that social media post on the Camp Community alum, tell me how to do better. That's the goal. As a reporter, 
I also believe that my goal is reflecting the, the diversity in our community to give space and to give time for representation. I became a reporter because I saw someone on TV who looked like my mom. And in seeing that woman, I believed I could do this too. And so the hope, the hope for me is that the stories I tell and the people who I interview provide that same inspiration to others today. And you will hear from one of them in just a few moments. The CEO of the Dallas Mavericks, Synth Marshall, is in the room. And let me tell you, she can light up a room like no one else. I have loved this woman from the moment I met her. And while a reporter tries to keep a distance from her and her interviewees, I am there for any chance I can get to hear from Synth or to simply be in her space. I promise that you will love her too. And after her talk, you'll be ready to act and to make changes in your own life and to encourage the changes in others. So Synth, just a big hug to you, a big thank you for being here with us for this event. I also love this quote from a speech by Edward Murrow, a pioneer in broadcast journalism. This instrument can teach, it can illuminate, yes, and it can even inspire but he can only do so to the extent that humans are determined to use it to those ends. Otherwise, it is nothing but wires and lights in a box. There is a great and perhaps decisive battle to be fought against in ignorance, intolerance, and indifference. This weapon of television could be useful. The Multicultural Alliance is a weapon in the fight to promote inclusion, diversity, and understanding, and eliminate bias, bigotry, and oppression in our community. I am honored tonight to be recognized by you, and I applaud you for the work that you continue to do. Thank you. So well deserved. Thank you. Adding congratulations to both Deborah and Bill is Cynthia Marshall, or Cynt as she prefers. Cynt has broken barriers, being the first in many arenas. In the late 1970s, she was the first black cheerleader at the University of California, Berkeley. She was the first African-American chair of the North Carolina State Chamber of Commerce. And today, she is the first black female chief executive officer in the NBA. Prior to her current role as the CEO of the Dallas Mavericks, for many decades, she climbed the corporate ladder at AT&T to become the chief diversity officer. Her goal was to transform the company into an inclusive culture and diverse workforce. And she did. I love her quote, diversity is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. Cynthia Marshall also knows the power of the story. Prior to speaking to underserved children at a local school, she called her mother to ask if it was okay to share her own childhood experiences. Her mother encouraged Cynt to use her voice, and she did. Synth continues to share her story and use her voice to create inclusive cultures and diverse workplaces. Synth, we applaud your every effort and are grateful for the many ways that you encourage others to be their complete and authentic self. Thank you, Paul, for such a warm introduction. Multicultural Alliance, thank you so much for your work to promote inclusion diversity and understanding in our communities. I am delighted to be with you to honor two amazing people. Congratulations, Bill Thornton, for a well-earned Lifetime Achievement Award. Deborah Ferguson, my friend, congratulations on the 2020 Multicultural Alliance Award. I've seen you bring people together of all backgrounds ethnicities, cultures, and genders. I've seen you light up the world. That's what I briefly want to challenge all of us to do, be a light in the world. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Deborah, you were a light when you walked into my Dallas Mavericks office over a year ago to invite me to be a part of your work with the Young Women's Leadership Academy. Your passion for bringing out the greatness in these young women was and still is contagious. You lit up the room 
as you talked about the challenges they were overcoming and the bright future awaiting each one of these young women. Little did you know that you represented in those few minutes in my office people who impacted my own life, people who didn't care about my 94804 zip code. You represented those who exposed me to things I had never seen before, things I didn't even know existed. You represented the light that found me as a teenager when I was in a very dark place. You represented those who stepped into my poor community to make a difference. You did all of that when you stepped into my office at the Dallas Mavericks, Mavericks headquarters. I challenge all of us to be like Deborah Ferguson, to not just light up an office, but light up a community. I challenge us to be a light in the world. I challenge us to get out of our comfort zones and widen our circles to include people who look like us and those who don't look like us. I challenge us to host courageous conversations where we can listen, learn, and unite. Unite around things that are overdue to be addressed in this country. I say overdue because my parents left Birmingham, Alabama when I was three months old to avoid raising their kids in segregation and racial oppression. They left Birmingham so that their children would not have to endure social injustices and the Jim Crow South. My parents were a part of the Birmingham Civil Rights Movement, a movement that landed Dr. King in a Birmingham jail where he wrote one of his famous letters in April of 1963. It's one of my favorite letters. One of my favorite excerpts reads, moreover, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. The movement has continued in its various shapes, forms, issues, and colors, and it is affecting all of us. It's 2020, and this is our moment in the movement. Yes, it's our moment in the movement. What will we do with our moment? Well, I can think of a few things right now that we can do. We can support the work of the Multicultural Alliance. We can be inclusive, like Deborah was when she walked into my office and invited me into her network. We can hold our friends, family, and associates accountable for their biases by challenging them on their beliefs. We can encourage them to challenge us. We can all lean in and call out bias kitchen table talk, stuff that happens behind closed doors. We can develop our individual and collective action plans to make a difference. We can be the light in the world that helps others see. What will we do with our moment? I know what Deborah Ferguson has done with her moment. We can start by being a light in the world. Deborah, thank you for being a light. Congratulations to both of our honorees. God bless you. Thank you, Sint, for your inspirational words. Yes, this is our moment. Before we conclude, I want to ask Adina Citron Walker, the MCA Vice President of Programs, to share with you once again how to get involved in the many programs that were highlighted. Thank you, Paul. We are excited to announce that we were a recipient of the Buckingham Strategic Wealth Pillar Grant. This grant is dedicated to table talks on race. If you haven't already, I'm inviting you to sign up and participate in one of these table talks or any of our programming. Get involved. 
Because you are watching, we feel that you are supporting inclusive communities. The question is, how will you continue to be part of our mission? We ask that you share this video and spread the word about opportunities with the Multicultural Alliance. We look forward to receiving your Get Involved response and learn the ways you would like to build inclusive communities together. We are living in critical times. COVID-19 has disrupted and devastated our lives. We are living in critical times. The death of George Floyd, alongside the deaths of far too many, has galvanized communities to dismantle racial inequities. We are living in critical times. Many people have suffered terrible injustices. We are living in critical times. Let us all work to cultivate inclusive communities. One individual can certainly make a difference. A collective group of individuals can deliver a message. A message that reverberates and ripples throughout a community, a country, and the world. At the Multicultural Alliance, we focus on dialogue and education. We deeply listen to and learn from one another's experiences. We are living in critical times. Help us be part of the solution. Help us be part of the solution. Help us to be part of the solution. Join with us as we build inclusive communities together. Join with us as we build inclusive communities together. Join with us as we build inclusive communities together.